Okay, by now you have a general idea of guided, kind of like getting you dangerous guided. We're in the organizer. Let's have a little bit of fun here, get practical, or actually, let's just have a little bit of fun. I've got a car right here and a car right here. There's only one difference between the two, and that this one has a black background. This one actually has no background at all. It's transparent. I want to show you the difference here. We're going to do actually a reflection in Guided and why you want to, in most cases, choose an object that doesn't have a background. So let's actually take this one and hold on the control key and click this one, non-contiguous selection. Let's go into our editor little right button there and go into photo editor. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going to start with this one. So we got it up. It's open. If it isn't, double click on it down here. Go into guided mode and scroll all the way down to reflection and select it. Again, the steps are there. They've got an example here. Roll over to see before. Ah, that's pretty cool. And, and I've got a black background there, so um, this should be perfect. What I'm going to do is say add reflection. You see, the problem here is that the reflection is semi-transparent in order for it to be reflection. And with the background in there of any color, actually, it's not really going to work. You're going to see a difference. These work best if you don't have a background at all. So let's get out of here. Let's cancel. It's not working. Let's go ahead and switch from this one to this one. The only real difference is this one doesn't have a background. That's the only thing. But it will make a big difference. So let's go down to reflection. Add reflection. See, now it's starting to work. It actually is starting to work. But you say, I don't want the background to be transparent. I want something back there. We do have a fill option right here. We can choose the color by clicking this first. I mean, you want it yellow, you want it blue. I want some of that color that's inside the chrome right here. So I'm going to click right there. It'll sample that color. Now let's see what happens if we fill the background. Well, now it's working because the background's a separate element. Now let's go ahead and get up a little bit higher. We do have an option for something called floor, glass, or water. So if you're doing like water on a lake, that would be great. This is a floor, so let's see what happens if we do floor. Okay, it begins to blur. That's a little bit more than what I want. I'm going to control it, bring that down just a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Click OK. Now, next step is intensity. If I move intensity, as you can see, it changes in a sense the opacity of the reflection. Distortion? Well, watch what happens when I use it. Watch the reflection. Every time I click it, it gets a little bit more compressed, which would be true of a reflection on a floor. It wouldn't be quite exactly the same height as the original, and we can keep doing that till we get to, say, maybe about there. Maybe we like that. We have a cropping tool, number seven. We can get in here and kind of, oh, get rid of the stuff we don't want. Just like cropping we did in the previous chapter. What do you want? Like that, click OK. Or actually, click the check mark. You have one other option here, the gradient tool. Watch what happens when I use it. Get up here and just drag over it. I'm going to hold the shift key so I draw a straight line. It just begins to soften that reflection just a little bit more. Go ahead and, if you like it, click done. There you go. I'm not saying it's the best reflection on the entire planet. But as a guided mode doing a reflection, if you have never ever done one before, that's actually not too bad to help you out. So doing reflections using guided mode. On to the next.